This video is brought to you by the good people over at Enermax, makers of fine computer cases, cooling solutions, power supplies, and more. For more information, visit EnermaxUSA.com. Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com, and this is part 7 of my PC upgrade series. And in this video, I'll be giving you my performance numbers and comparisons, comparing a single GTX 560 with a second GTX 560. Now these are not the newest cards by any means, but for what they are, they're actually pretty fast and once you combine two of them together, it can definitely help add a performance increase in your games. Although you might run into some SLI issues such as micro stuttering or scenarios where you might actually see a decrease in performance, so I'll be showing you all of my comparisons and whatnot in a minute. But if you watched my earlier videos where I introduced you to the second GTX 560 and the introduction to this series as a whole, I mentioned that I actually purchased a 7950, which in itself is a very high-end video card and once I overclocked it, it's actually comparable to a GTX 680 and it's $170 cheaper, so I'm very happy with the 7950. But that's for another video, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and switch to my charts and numbers to give you a look at what a second GTX 560 gave me. So here we are, this is the main slide that outlines all of the games and applications that I've tested. There were 19 of them total, and as you can see, the red line is the second GTX 560 added on, while the blue line is for a single GTX 560. So starting with Unigen Heaven 4.0, which is a pretty graphics intensive synthetic benchmark. Um, you can see the settings that I used below the graph, so if you want to try and replicate this for yourself, there you go. So as you can see here, we added about 26 frames per second by adding a second GTX 560, so it didn't quite push us over the 60 FPS mark. That would, that would have meant that we would have received a two times increase, which technically isn't really possible because simply adding a second video card won't immediately give you double the performance because there's some overhead and things like that to consider. So moving on to the next one, which is Unigen Sanctuary 2.3. This one wasn't nearly as intensive, so this already gave us high frame rates to begin with. But as you can see, we definitely saw an increase in frame rates there. And once again, throughout all of these, you'll see the settings that I used below, so you could try and replicate this for yourself. Next, we have Unigen Tropics, which I like. Uh, you can see that we are already over the 60 FPS mark, so this didn't really show too much, but you can see that we had a fairly hefty increase in performance. Next we have Valley, which is my favorite Unigen benchmark because the environment looks really cool. This did not push us over the 60 FPS limit either, or threshold either, but we did come close, close to 56 FPS from 31. And moving on to actual games now, we have Battlefield 3. So I put an asterisk next or to the end of the game name because this does not have an integrated benchmarking tool. So I had to set up my own custom run. So I tried to replicate both times the same exact run through and on a particular level. So I think in Battlefield 3, I used the initial aircraft carrier one where I walked through the little hallways and then onto the platform and then that's where it ended. So here you can see that with Battlefield 3 it helped greatly with performance. So SLI scales pretty well with Battlefield 3. Bioshock Infinite, probably the game of the year hopefully. You can see that we went from just about 44 frames per second to over 60, which is good. 60 is typically the number that you would like to aim for. I think 45 FPS is a pretty, is would, I'd consider that to be the minimal point, but 60 FPS is good. And by adding a second GTX 560, we were able to reach over 60 FPS at the max settings for Bioshock Infinite. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Counter-Strike Source. Now this game, the integrated benchmark tool, it's been messed up for quite a long time. So basically, instead of the camera moving around and looking at the different things, it would actually stare at the floor. So here you see that a single GTX 560 can easily push over 400 frames per second for their particular benchmark tool, which is slightly useless in this case. Adding a second one is able to give over 60% of an increase to 760 FPS. But basically when you're playing the game, you should get no less than maybe 150, even on a single GTX 560. Next up, we have a series of Codemaster games, starting with Dirt 3, so maxed out with 4x MSA anti-aliasing, 
we're actually able to push over 100 frames per second. So pretty much most of the Codemaster games seem to scale very well with SLI. Dirt Showdown, we're actually finally able to hit over 60 FPS, a single GTX 560. I'd have to say it struggled. For a racing game, I want it to have at least 60 all the time, and adding a second GTX 560 was able to achieve that. F1 2012 brought some interesting results because it actually decreased performance quite a bit, so we went under 60 FPS from 63 to 51. And this one, I'm not too sure, I wasn't really able to find too many instances where other people resulted with the same results. So it was interesting to see that going with an SLI setup actually decreased performance quite a bit. Next up we have Far Cry 2, it's a bit of an older title and I remember getting this game when it came out and it pushed the PC that I had at the time to its limits and the frame rates were horrible. So it was kind of funny to see getting getting over 100 frames per second with a single card. Adding a second one gives you close to 170, so as you can tell, it will give you a fairly hefty performance increase for Far Cry 2. Mm -hmm. Far Cry 3, though, it's definitely a pretty graphics intensive game. With a single GTX 560, I was only able to get 21 FPS, while adding a second GTX 560, I actually did not complete that test because my saved game messed up. I didn't really want to start over again because for the single GTX 560 I actually had to set up a custom run. I forgot to add the asterisk there, but I had it so that it would last 90 seconds and I would be running through certain areas. Since my saved game was lost, I didn't want to catch up again, so I didn't test a second GTX 560 with Far Cry 3. Moving on to Grand Theft Auto 4, I think that this game either has a frame rate limit or it has a frame rate limit because even when I tested this with my 7950, a much faster car than these, I was also getting 65 FPS. So that tells me that this game does have a frame rate limit, at least in the benchmark tool, because as you can tell, adding a second uh, 560, we still didn't even achieve barely any increase. So moving on to Just Cause 2, which I love this game, especially now that it has multiplayer capabilities. This game has in, uh, three integrated benchmarking runs, so you can see all three of them right here, as well as the graphics settings below that. One thing I noticed for the 7950 is that GPU water simulation and bokeh filter are not available, which I'm assuming is because it's an AMD card, and I guess the developers are using technology that's exclusive to NVIDIA cards. But anyway, here are the numbers. For two of the tests, we were able to push over 60 FPS, which is what we want. With the last one, it came close at 54 FPS, it's still a noticeable increase from 37, so overall, this game scales fairly well. Metro 2033 was another game that I had to make a custom run for, and I took quite a while to figure out a run that I thought was easily replicated. And here, you can see that the frame rate was actually decreased. I'm 100% sure that my runs were exactly the same with one 560 and two 560s, so there might be some SLI issues with Metro 2033. Next we have Project Cars, a work in progress game that still has a year until it's released, and this one might have been down to my particular run because some of the AI cars that I had enabled were doing weird things, crashing, which might have decreased my frame rate. So I'm just going to skip that one. Here we have Sleeping Dogs, another Square Enix game. And we were already able to push over 60 FPS with a single 560. With the second one, we were able to achieve almost 112. And this is with normal anti-aliasing. If, if you step that up to extreme anti-aliasing, I think that's what it's called, it actually decreases performance very much. So I just stuck with normal anti-aliasing, and these are the results. Lastly, we have Test Drive Unlimited 2. I had to make a custom run for this one. I had a, a nice little route through Hawaii and it worked quite well. And you can see that it helped increase the frame rates just a little bit. This game is, it was rather poorly developed, so it's just not really optimized for pretty much anything. And that concludes my GTX 560 benchmarks. And as you can tell, for most of the things here, it boosted performance quite a bit. Although in a couple of small instances, it either didn't help at all, or it made things worse. 
so perhaps driver updates could help that or game patches I don't know but these were my results and my next video will actually cover the 7950 on its own and it will also compare itself to a single GTX 560 and a GTX 560 SLI so I'll just add another line to each of these charts with the 7950 results and that is it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with this video, so thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.